Before starting with lip augmentation procedure, I think it's very important to have a discussion with the patient of exactly what their goals are. Some patients want lips that are better shaped, and some patients may want lips that are more full, and some patients may want both. So it's very important to have a plan of action, sort of speak, before starting the actual procedure. It's also important to keep the lip dimensions, uh, what's known as a golden ratio, in mind, not only when performing the procedure, but also when discussing the procedure with the patient. The golden ratio does vary between different ethnic groups and sort of what's in style and what's not in style and may be dependent on what the patient wants, but the ratio, the golden ratio, is considered, of, uh, considered to be upper lip to lower lip of 1 to about 1.6 in size. So the lower lip should be a little bit more full, especially centrally, and that is the rule, sort of the golden ratio rule. So it's very important to discuss with the patient exactly what the plan of the procedure is before you actually start the procedure. I think that most patients will say they don't want to be overfilled. They don't want their lips to be too big or too full or to look like one of those people you see walking down the street or in your neighborhood that you think are overdone. And in my experience, most patients will come back and say, you know, I wish there was a little bit more volume. I also think it's important to tell patients that in the beginning, their lips may look more full than they actually will be because a lot, there's a lot of swelling during the procedure and a lot of that swelling will go down. So it takes about, I would say, three to five days on average for that swelling to come down. What else is important is anesthesia, and I think that's really critical. If you look at studies of the barriers to getting cosmetic procedures, after you get over the barrier of cost, the second barrier is fear of pain. So this patient that we're watching being injected has been numbed and prepped before the procedure. So in this particular patient, we used a topical lidocaine tetracaine uh, mix to perform topical anesthesia, and that was uh, on for about 20 uh, minutes. And then the same product was uh, put inside the mouth in the vestibule just prior to injecting her with 1% lidocaine. And I used five injections on the top and, and um, four injections on the bottom of 1% lidocaine into the vestibule, sort of the space between the gums and the lips, to give extra anesthesia. I inject uh, five injections on the top of 0.5 cc's of 1% lidocaine and four injections on the bottom of 0.5 cc's of 1% li lidocaine. And that really gives patients a more or less painless procedure. And if you, while you're watching this video, you'll see that she really isn't feeling a whole lot of pain while we're going through it. So this particular technique that I used in this patient is really more for shaping and volume. So we began by injecting her ver vermilion borders uh, at the top in a retrograde fashion. And I'm very careful usually trying to inject about the same amount of filler on both sides so I keep track of exactly how much I'm injecting. Although I always discuss with the patients before we start that it's normal to have some asymmetries and we all do have some asymmetries and correcting that asymmetry with a procedure is rather difficult. So once we injected the vermilion border in a retrograde fashion up top, we've done the same thing on the bottom. I also injected her uh, GK points to give her lips a little bit of a pop on the top, and you can see that. Uh, it's very important to shape the cupid's bow to give that a little bit more volume. And then on the bottom, what you're seeing is where I'm doing a, uh, some bolus injections on the bottom and the top uh, in the wet to dry mucosal area just to give the patient a little bit more volume in that particular area. After the injection, it's very important to massage the lips gently. That gentle massage uh, prevents a bruising, which can occur with vigorous massage. I always tell patients that their lips may feel a little lumpy-bumpy for a few days, and it does take time to kind of settle down. We uh, give everyone ice packs to make sure that uh, their, um, they ice right after the procedure, and I also um, give everyone Arnica or suggest they take Arnica, especially for those that tend to bruise. With this particular patient, you could see that there was a little bit of a product left over, so we decided to put just a little bit of that product into the nasolabial folds uh, just to not waste it and to use it in another area where you could use a little bit of help. In conclusion, the goal of this particular patient was to have lips that are nicely shaped but also have a little bit more volume. And I think for her to have a very good experience with this, it's important to keep the look natural, just enhanced, and 
performing this procedure in a painless or almost painless way I also think is very important because that kind of experience will have this kind of a patient come back for a treatment in another area or retreatment of the lips when it's finally time.